Welcome into Songwriter Connection. My name is Dave Lenahan. As you can tell, we are not in the studio this month. We are at the historic Claremont Inn in Batavia, Ohio. That's because we've got a very special guest for you tonight. Came all the way up from Nashville. And later on tonight, at the historic Claremont Inn, he's going to play a showcase for us, and we're looking forward to that. You know, just looking at the list of the songs this gentleman has written. He's uh, written songs for a guy named Garth Brooks you might have heard of, <laughs> Leanne Womack, Brad Paisley, Montgomery Gentry, Daryl Worley and he are really good friends. And in fact, he and Daryl hooked up for a big number one song uh, early in 19, or 2003 that ended up being a number one song and was nominated for CMA's Song of the Year, Songwriter Awards. We're real happy to have him. That song, by the way, was called Have You Forgotten? And he's here to do it for us tonight. Please welcome Mr. Wynn Varble. I hear people say we don't need this war But I say there's some things worth fighting for What about our freedom And this piece of ground We didn't get to keep By backing down They say we don't realize The mess we're getting in Before you start your preaching let me ask you this, my friend Have you forgotten How it felt that day To see your homeland under fire And her people blown away Have you forgotten When those towers fell We had neighbors still inside Going through living hell Say we shouldn't worry about Bin Laden Have you forgotten? They took all the footage Off my TV Say it's too disturbing For you and me It'll just breed anger It's what the experts say if it was up to me, I'd show it every day Some say this country is just out looking for a fight After 9-11, man, I'd have to say that's right Have you forgotten how it felt that day To see your homeland under fire And her people blown away Have you forgotten when those towers fell, we had neighbors still inside, going through a living hell. We're about to get the ones behind the lot. Have you forgotten? I've been there with the soldiers who have gone away to war. You can bet they remember what they're fighting for Have you forgotten All the people killed Yes, yeah, some went down like heroes In that Pennsylvania field Have you forgotten About our Pentagon All the loved ones that we lost Those left to carry on don't you tell me not to worry about being loved. Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? Have you forgotten? Wow, what an incredible song. It's become an anthem for us, and uh, you know, we're sitting here with the gentleman who wrote that song, along with Daryl Worley. It's Wynn Varble who came to join us on our show for the National Anthem. It's good to have you here. Good to see you, Dave. Oh, great to meet you. You know, none of us will forget where we were when we heard about the attacks on 9 11, and uh, I don't think I'll ever forget where I was the first time I heard that song, driving into work and uh, about drove off the road, because I think that song just says what a lot of people in the United States are feeling today, and it really just wrapped it up in that song. You've got to be pretty proud of that song. Yeah, yeah, we're proud of it. Um, me and Darrell wrote this song thinking that uh, 
he might put it on an album. He had just come back from Afghanistan over there, and, and he wanted to write a song for those guys, you know. And, and we'd been talking about writing a patriotic song for veterans and the military guys for a long time. And and uh, he called me one morning, it was right after Christmas last year, and he said, uh, man, I want to write a song for these guys. And I said, well, you know, let's do it. And I went over and we ran through three or four ideas, and. We got to talking about the protesters, you know, that's protesting all that stuff. And I said, uh, man, it makes you want to grab them and shake them and say, have you forgotten what they, what them guys did to us, you know? And, uh, wow, and we just looked at each other and we said, there's our <laughs> idea right there. You know? So, uh, but it was, uh, it was just a bunch of stuff we were feeling at the time and um, just, you know, the timing and everything on that song was everything. They they hurried up and went in and cut it. And, and uh, let's talk about the time that it took to write a song. Because you get an idea, have you forgotten? There's this hook. There it is. There it is. That's where we're going. What's the next step? You map it out. You or you just sit down and start strumming with. It? Well, you just sat down and and uh, came up with the first verse pretty quick. And and uh, we we were on our way then. Um, I think we we might have stopped and went in eight. I mean, total time it probably took us a couple of hours to write it, you know. But wow. time we time we got the idea, you know, we were there all day. But okay. um, that's kind of magic, <clears throat> like magic when that happens when you, when you write a song that quick, isn't it? Do you feel that? Oh, right? I, I mean, in my opinion, the good, the good song that's the way they come. That's the way they, they just write that's their good. self, really. I mean, wow. Um, We've but, talked to some people on this year that say they take up to a year to write a song. Yeah, well, I, I'm speaking for me, you know, as far as if I have to labor over one. And, I mean, I've had some songs that took a couple or three tries to get right that have been cut and stuff, but uh, I have more luck with the ones that just kind of come to me out of the blue, you know. Yep, that's why I love this show. We really focus on the, the, the art and craft of songwriting. And you know, there's no right answers or wrong answers. No, there's no. And I love hearing people's philosophies and how it happens for them. And uh, and just looking at the anatomy of the song, so uh, that's that's really something, uh, and appreciate that insight. Uh, tell us how you and Daryl put that. Where did you guys meet? Oh, you guys been well, I I had signed with Starstruck Music, uh, I think in '94, and Daryl was writing with would come over there and write with some of the guys over there sometimes. He was still living down in Savannah, mm -hmm. Tennessee, and um, yeah, because I always made the mistake of saying Savannah, Georgia. Yeah, Savannah, Tennessee. But um, you know we. Uh, I, I saw him around there a couple of times, and um, I think we went end up just talking in the hall one day, and, and we just answered friends, you know. And, and uh, later on, we we were roommates for about two years, you know, over there in Nashville before we both got married. So mm -hmm. it was uh, we had a lot of fun together, a lot of late nights, you know. <laughs> so you're from a small town uh, outside of Atlanta, it's Ellenwood, Georgia. Mm -hmm. That's where you're from. Okay. Um, tell me about how it started for you. I mean, you, I, I read that you picked up the guitar at the age of 15. It was later. about then, yeah. Yeah, about 15? Yeah, it was, uh, my daddy had a bunch of buddies that picked, you know, and uh, sang, and he'd carry me around to these parties and stuff they'd have, and, and they was just having so much fun. I, one of them showed me a few chords one time and, and uh, showed me how to play Folsom Prison Blues, you know. And, and I was I was hooked then, so. But um, yeah, and and, and uh, we played, you know, and then me and some of my buddies and all started picking together. And You're in a bluegrass band for. Well, years? we had a little group that uh, me and some friends of mine down there that I went to high school with, uh, played some bluegrass and country and just whatever they'd let us play, wherever they'd let us play, you know, and. Uh, we had a blast, and, and you know, them guys still pick. They just, you know, they were smart and got a real job and <laughs> made some real money. You know? I don't know. They may look at you right now, going with a big uh, number one hit. You know. Yeah, but that gone. You you add up all the hours. I probably it's well below minimum wage. I promise you after all. But uh, you know what I mean. Yeah, yeah. Sometimes it's a struggle. It's great when it comes in though. Oh, I've had a blast. I, mean, I wasn't changing that. I mean, I've loved what I, I love what I do for a living. It's what I always wanted to do, you know, and I just, there was no other option for me, you know. 
and just uh, I want to continue on with the history of, of Wound Barbell, how you got from a small town in Georgia to Nashville and how it all started to come together for you, but I want to hear another song, if you could. If you all right. Mm -hmm. Wynn Barbell is our guest today from Nashville, Tennessee. You're watching Songwriter Connection. Uh, this song was was out last summer, well, it's actually summer before last, I guess, by this new kid, Kevin Denny, and um, he, uh, I don't really know what it did on the charts, but it was, you know, it was big in Texas, I'll say that. Well, he wanted someone firmer, and he wanted someone younger, and he always had a thing for blonde. As it happened, his new secretary happened to be all that rolled into one. And the woman who had lived with him, an angel who had given him the last 22 years, is now crying big Cadillac tears. Cadillac tears don't hurt so bad. Cadillac tears. So sad. Yes, he might have lost a wedding ring, but she took him for everything. Now, Mama didn't do too bad. Oh, she's crying big Cadillac tears. Yes, he's running through his money so fast it isn't. She's emptied every shop in town She bought her make some diamond rings And lots of other shiny things to wear When she goes stepping out And she's headed for a lawyer's cause This morning when he called her He said checks are piling up down here Oh, she's crying big Cadillac tears Cadillac tears Don't hurt so bad Cadillac tears, she ain't so sad. Yes, he might have lost a wedding ring, but she took him for everything. Now, Mama didn't do too bad. Oh, she's crying big Cadillac tears. Hey, boy, she's cruising down the street with custom wheels and leather seats. You know, she gets a new one every year. Crying big Cadillac tears. That gal is crying big Cadillac tears. That's Wynn Barnwell, our guest on Songwriter Connection tonight. We're live at the historic Claremont Inn in the Tavia, Ohio. That song was a hit for uh, uh, Kevin Denny, who's one of my favorite new artists in the past. Uh, He's really great. He uh, sang the tail end. Oh, well, yes, from just down the road from Lexington, Ohio, or, or uh, to Kentucky. Oh, yeah. Uh, I understand, which is, which is awesome. And for a guy who didn't pick up that guitar at age 15, you picked it pretty well. <laughs> well, you're just being nice. <laughs> I played that very well. I wanted to get out my egg shaker and join you there. Why did you do that? <laughs> yeah. I've been taking lessons on that for a few years, you know, for percussion. Uh, but anyway, wins our guest, and uh, it's really good to have you here. Um, you came from a small town uh, outside of uh, Atlanta. What made you what, the call of Nashville? What, how did it happen? What, what brought you there? Well, it was. I took the long way to Nashville. I I went to. Uh, I was working on a horse show circuit. Uh, this buddy of mine got me in with, and uh, we ended up in South Florida. They end up playing a bunch of clubs down there for about eight years, and uh, it was hard to leave. The weather was good, and uh, oh, yeah. the women were warm, and <laughs> and uh, I probably shouldn't say that, but <laughs> but anyway, you know, and I, finally every year I was going to move up there. I'd, I'd actually been to Nashville a uh, time or two, and had met this guy named Dave Gibson. I don't know if you're familiar with Dave, but wrote ships that don't come oh, in, and okay. a lot of uh, stuff like that, and. Okay. <clears throat> Matter of fact, they had the Gibson Miller Band there for a while, you know. Oh, yes, Blue Miller, okay. Yeah. Those guys. In fact, well, I went to high school with a guy that played uh, steel in that band. Hi. Mike Davis. Yeah. 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 Mm -hmm. How about that? Small world. Yeah. yeah. All right. Anyway, uh, Dave kept trying to, you know, I, every time I talked to him, he was having hit after hit, and he said, man, you need to get up here, you know. And 
So finally, I just packed it all up and went up there and decided to tough it out, you know. So. With a songwriter in mind? As being a songwriter? Yeah, yeah. Okay. When did you first decide that that's where your talent really was? Um, I guess, I mean, I've, I've been writing songs, you know, since right after I started playing the guitar, you know, that's one of the first things I did. When you, when you first picked up the guitar, were you the kind of person that just wanted to play all the cover songs of what you heard on the radio, or did you pick it up and go, wow, you know, this is a new melody? This is kind of like kind of both, you know. Both? <clears throat> yeah, I always, I always loved Hank Williams, and it just amazed me how he wrote all the songs. And, yeah. <clears throat> and um, I just, uh, I guess, you know, when when I was playing those clubs and I was, we'd do a lot of original stuff and people would request it and, and uh, you know, I and just... Sometimes it's tough to play originals in a club. I don't it know is, it really is, is, yeah. Because people don't want to hear that yeah. stuff, you know. But, but uh, and then, you know, and Dave, too, I mean, I was, I would still write with Dave every once in a while and, and we'd demo stuff and publishers in Nashville seemed to really like it, you know, when nothing got cut yet, but... Um, so I guess I figured, you know, I'd give it a try. Give it a try. Tested the waters a little bit when it had moved. And yeah. What was the first cut? Okay. Uh, well, the first cut actually was a, a group called Perfect Stranger. Mm -hmm. And they were on their own label. And then Kerr picked So when somebody said they'd cut the song that I wrote with a couple of buddies of mine, I was not too thrilled. I mean, I, you know, it was, you know, so what, you know? But then Kerr picked them up because they had some success with um, you have the right to remain silent, and um, so then yeah, right to remain silent. Yeah, right so then I had a you know I had a major label cut, and then but the first single I guess was the Sammy Kershaw thing called "Fit to Be Tied Down." Oh yeah, remember that song? So that's the first one I heard on the radio. So after that, was it a little easier? Did people want to hear your stuff more? A little bit, Open you know. Up the doors, maybe. Or yeah, what? it was. Uh, it's just getting your name out there and getting people familiar with what you do. I was fishing, actually, I was putting my boat in the water over Percy Breach Lake when the first time that song came on the radio. And I was I was standing on the trailer and this guy's beside me pulling his boat out of the water and, and I, it was on in my truck and I thought, I gotta tell this guy that that's my song on the radio. But he didn't act like he really would care, so I didn't say nothing about it. I would have been scaring a fish for my <laughs> That's awesome. That'd be a great feeling. Yeah. How about the feeling to go to your first number one party? You were there when that song hit. It was, uh, it all happened so fast, man. I'll tell you, that song went number one in five weeks. Tied um, Convoy, if you remember that old oh, song. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah, it tied that for the fastest climb, I think, number one they told us. And, it was, I mean, we wrote it, and literally two months later, from the day we wrote it, it was number one, and that just don't happen now. That is all. unbelievable. Yeah. Um, mm. They had cut it and done all that, and it, uh, it all happened so quick, man. I'll tell you, me and Daryl both were just, our heads were still spinning, you know, and uh, so it, it felt really good. It was, uh, you know, and I was glad it was a song that, my first number one being a song that would, you know, make a difference, you know, and, and have some meaning to it, you know. In case you're just joining us, we were talking about this song, Have You Forgotten, which went to the top of their world. This is the gentleman that wrote that song. It's Wynn Varvel. He's our guest on Songwriter Connection. We're live at the Claremont Inn, and uh, well, I'm going to talk to you about another song. Possibly? No, all right. <laughs> yeah, it's really good. Mm, I'll tell you what. I'll do one that, um, That, that Alan Jackson just put on hold here for y'all. Bar Johnny Cash's groove for this one. Well, I stopped off at Shooters to wind down on my way home. Told the barkeep right up front, I can't stay too long. In fact, I'll be surprised if I have more than one Bud Light. Right. I was 
at the bottom of the night when she came walking in her face was about a two and a half but her body was a ten i said you're the prettiest thing i've ever seen in my whole life Right. Wrong place, wrong time Tempting fruit is best left on the vine Eve told Adam it won't hurt to take just one little bite She sat right down beside me. She said, honey, my name's Kim. She was showing off enough cleavage to lose a Buick in. I said, you come here often? She said, I've never been in a bar before tonight. Right. Well, she ordered us some Jaeger bombs and started rubbing on my leg. This big biker dude came through the door. She said, hey, look, it's Greg. She said, yeah, he's my boyfriend. But he's not the jealous type. Right. Wrong place, wrong time. Tempted fruit is best left on the vine. Eve told Adam it won't hurt to take just one little bite. Right. Well, he had fists the size of grapefruits. He looked a little pissed. He came walking over, yelling at her, Who the hell is this? I ducked in time to miss the left. But guess what caught me in the eye? Right. Correct. Fabulous <laughs> song. I can hear Alan Jackson all over that one. Well, I hope you do. I hope yeah. you do. I'm holding right now, so hopefully this next album we'll hear it. Huh? Well, hopefully. Brenda Tavy at the Claremont Inn. The show is Songwriter Connection. We have Nashville uh, songwriter Wynn Varble as our guest. For more on Wynn, I want you to check out his website. It's Wynn Varble. And Wynn is W-Y-N-N, Varble, B-A-R-B-L-E dot com. And uh, there you'll find information on him where he's playing. Uh, uh, eventually, get your CDs there. Huh? Yeah, I'll be up there in about three, three or four weeks. I also want to encourage you, if you have an interest in songwriting, to uh, join your local chapter at NSAI. It stands for National, National Songwriters Association International. We have our own website, uh, which is so southbrooksongwriters.com. So check that out. And perhaps you can come out and join us for one of our open mic sessions, which are the second and uh, fourth Thursday, the second and fourth Thursday of every month. Uh, when I wanted to ask you, where are you going from here? I mean, uh, songwriter or anything? I mean. Uh, well, I did. Uh, a couple of years ago, I signed a deal with Sony Records and uh, did a record over there. They uh, kept the record and released me. <laughs> um, but, uh, you know, Mark Wright and uh, John Grady come in and, and uh, took over. And, and everybody knew there would be sweeping changes over there because that's the way it always is when you get a new regime. And, uh, and uh, they're both them guys are friends of mine. And, and, uh, they cut a lot of my songs on people, and so I'm not going to cry too much. Okay. But uh, anyway, I, I do have a CD coming out that I'm putting out myself, and uh, it's, uh, it's uh, got a lot of, I think it's got 12 songs on it. A lot of, a lot of them are kind of humorous songs, and some of them are serious, you know, but it's, it's only one on there that's been cut to somebody else. Yeah. Okay. Which one was that? It was a thing that's on Brad Paisley's new record called uh, Ain't Nothing Like. Oh, great. Awesome. Also, you're saying do a little acting these days? Uh, yeah, I'm uh, in a play called Cod Roaster that, uh, with uh, Brian Kennedy and Troy Jones. And uh, it's, uh, we're, we're starting to pick up some steam with it. So if y'all uh, run across a play called Cod Roaster, Cod Roaster. it's definitely not worth the entertainment. I promise you that. Wonderful. Yeah, that's playing in around the Nashville area right now. Well, we're doing it. Uh, I think we got a date uh, next Friday in Augusta, Georgia. We got a date 
I think the next Sunday we're in Spring Hill, Tennessee, and then we go down to Oxford, Mississippi, and uh, Selma, Alabama. And we're just, you know, that's what it is. Uh, Spring Hill, they make a Saturday. The chance we might go to Iraq and do it for the soldiers up there. I just want to tell you what a pleasure it was to meet you, to have you on our show. Man, back at you, Dave. Man, I know next time I see you, you're going to have a few more number one hits. Yeah. Well, I hope you're right about that. Too. Hey, we're pulling for you. Many, many more. Right. <laughs> <laughs> Will you take us out with another? Oh, sure. Let's see. Wind Barbell and Songwriter Connection. Thank you for joining us. One of Montgomery Gentry cut here. It's all her fault She never had any patience at all I'm a complicated guy She didn't try to understand I could claim I had nothing to do that I'm lonesome and blue but that wouldn't be true I'm a self-made man Yeah, I'm the one who fooled around and let the one who loved me down cause she had more of me than she could stand and I blamed everyone but me now that it's too late, I see nobody help me get to where I am. I'm a self-made man. I can blame on the way I was raised. Or I could say that I was just too afraid. In somebody else's hand I could always make one more excuse But in the end 